Hey Polish fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wildman Lacquer. In today's video I have more Goodwill bags. <laughs> I was really pleasantly surprised when I showed up at my Bremerton Goodwill to find a whole lot of nail polish available that day. I ended up grabbing three bags and I actually could have grabbed more this time but I did end up getting three bags, two of which were $5.99 and the third was $4.99. So we have a lot of polish to go through. I think we're going to do some swatches of some of the oranges and see if I want them on my fall rack and then of course as we go we'll see which ones I'm keeping and which ones I'm adding to the D-stash and of course whether or not they are in good shape. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start with the bag that was $4.99. So this one had a lot of oranges. I did note that this time they were doing a lot of sort of color grouping with their nail polishes. So this one had some of the oranges. There was a bag entirely of purple nail polish, <laughs> which I know, surprising that I did not grab. Um, but that one, just none of the brands or bottles really were drawing me in. And I think they had like a Zoe in there that I already had. So that one I didn't end up getting. So this one I'm curious about these oranges here. They are mostly from a brand that I haven't heard from. It might be maybe like a drugstore, not a drugstore brand, salon brand or something. It does say professional on it, but it is Elise. And this first one is called Rusty Treasure. Very fitting. This is sort of a rusty orange. It appears to be a cream formula. It does have some separation going on, so I'll try giving it a good shake. But this is one of the colors that I really do like, so we are going to swatch this one, see if it is any good. Oh, interesting. So this one is a squishier jelly base than what I was initially thinking. So that is it in one coat. Whew, that is strong smelling though. Oh boy. So we're going to let that dry and come back with a second coat pretty soon. Um, the second one is also from Elise. This one does not have a label on the bottom. This one appears to be a shimmer formula and I actually really like the tone of this one as well. It's sort of a mix between a rusty orange and like a, a Marsala shade. So I really want to see how this one looks as well. This one seems to have seen better days. <laughs> this one is also by Elise. Again, no name. This is a peachy shade. Also appears to be somewhat of the jelly consistency. So yeah, kind of squishy. This is definitely not a color that I see myself reaching for. It's too sheer and I really don't like this tone in sheer on my nails. So I think I will be passing this one along maybe putting it in a, a less than perfect mystery box. We'll see if there's any interest in, in something like that for these um, much loved polishes. The next one also from Elise also has no name. They appeared to have uh, fallen off quite easily, I guess. This is another one of the shimmer polishes, maybe almost like pearl. I would describe this as like a shell pink. This is also not exactly my favorite color. It's a little bit... I don't know. It's a little bit too retro for me. I love grandma shades, but this is just not it for me. So I think I will be destashing that one as well. All right, let's see if this is dry enough for me to add a second coat of what was that rusty treasure and see if this is something that I want to add to my fall rack or to my collection. This is actually very nice in two coats. It's probably not fully opaque in those two coats, but this is a nice tone. Kind of like a, an orange clay. It is very strong smelling though, so I don't think it's like five free or ten free or anything like that. It does say toluene and formaldehyde free, so it's probably just those two free. So whatever else I'm used to indie polishes not having, these probably have. So we'll see. We'll see. I do like the shade though. Yeah, it's a nice color. The other one that I wanted to try was the no label. So we'll see how this one swatches. This one does have that shim shimmerish formula to it. Okay, a little bit more pinky, less orangey. I was thinking it would be a little bit more uh, of a mix between the two colors. Definitely does have that pearl finish to it. Got a little bit of fuzz there. I kind of like this though. So I will want to see that with a second coat. Okay, the next orange is this one here. Uh, 
actually not sure if the brand is Louise or original or what the case might be. It does say manufactured in 2013. Wow, so pretty old polish. So that's a pretty bright orange. Um, I would almost, well, I was going to say I would almost call that traffic cone, but that's not quite bright enough. It's, it's a pretty true orange, like orange, orange. And it's not really my, my cup of tea. So I will be adding that to the D-stash as well. Next up is from Jordana. This one is called Hot and Spicy. This brand I have heard about. I want to say I might even have a polish from them. This one is a really beautiful shade of deep orange. I do want to see this one swatched as well. So let's come back with a second coat on the unnamed shade and then do a first coat on Hot and Spicy. Maybe I should put them in order so that I don't get them confused. Okay, so this definitely keeps its pearl-ness. But I actually kind of like it in this one. In that, in that color, it's very pretty. And the one from Jordana actually has not quite a shimmer, more like a glass flag in it that is very, very pretty. So here's that unlabeled one from Elise. See what I mean? That's really pretty. <laughs> I actually like it. It's it's um, another grandma shade, but this kind of grandma shade I can absolutely get behind. I really like this one. I will be keeping that one as well. That is really pretty. Here's that Jordana in one coat. I do really like the one from Jordana, but I am on the fence about it mainly because I feel like I might have a color similar enough to it, but it is very, very pretty. That's nice. I like that. Yep, we'll keep it. It's a beautiful, juicy orange. We'll at least put it in the collection and see if I can compare it to some of the other oranges that I have, but that's a beautiful shade. Yeah, yep, I like it. <laughs> We're adding that to the keep pile, and this is our D stash pile. We're gonna tuck that behind. Okay, moving on. Oh, we've, let's go ahead and do this other unique polish because this is, I'm pretty sure, another old polish from 2013. This one is called Zane and Unique. So I'm not really sure still about the brand um, because none of them are the same across the board as far as like what's on the bottle. But this one is like a key lime green, another color that's not really up my alley. It does appear to be a cream formula in a bit of a need of like thinner or a very, very good shake. Uh, we're going to put that in the D stash or at least in the not keeping pile. This one might be sort of on its way out or in need of some love. So we'll put that aside there. The next polish is from Zoya. This one is called Envy. This appears to be a very dark shade of green. I do want to swatch this one to see how it looks. I don't think I have this one. It doesn't strike me as a color that I would have purchased necessarily because it is such a deep green. Oh, wow. There's like a shimmer or something in here that I was not expecting. See, it's almost got like a speckly look in that first coat. Interesting. Not what I was expecting. I was thinking that was just a simple, straight up cream formula. Interesting. Okay, so we'll do a second coat of that once that first coat gets a chance to dry a little bit. Let's go ahead and do this one because this was one that I was very excited to see in the bag. This is from Love and Beauty, which is from Forever 21. And this one is called Emerald. I think you can see why it caught my attention in the bag. This is a really beautiful shade. It has a dark green base full of a glass fleck shimmer particle that is shimmery and beautiful. Definitely want to see this one swatched as well. And I don't think I have any from this brand. I don't think. I know I've seen it before. Oh, how pretty is that? So in that first coat, it is squishy. You have that beautiful base and that glow from those glass fleck bits. So, so pretty. All right, let's do a second coat of that Zoya. It's a very interesting texture to this polish with this sort of a speckled look. If you know if that's intentional, feel free to, to let me know because I don't think I've ever seen that from Zoya before. But there it is in two coats. It's a very interesting shade of green, I've got to say. I actually kind of like it. 
I hope it's showing up as green on camera because this is definitely a very dark green, but it's not like a typical dark green. It's almost more like a very dark moss green, but incredibly dark. I actually like that one. Surprisingly, I like that one. We're going to put that in the key pile. That was Zoya's Envy. And we're going to do a second coat of Emerald from Forever 21 Love and Beauty or Beauty and whatever it was. This is, I already know one that I'm keeping. This is just gorgeous. I love this one. Look at that. Very shimmery with those twinkles. It is pretty sheer still with those two coats, but you could always just layer this over a matching undie, a blurring base coat, or if you don't mind the squishy look on the nail, I think this would look beautiful. So another green that we're keeping. Surprise, surprise. Well, not too surprising with this one. Surprise, surprise on the Zoya, but this one was Emerald by Love and Beauty. Then we have another from Elise. This one is called Pastel Gray. And this is kind of interesting. It's, well, A, in very much need of a shake, but it's got sort of a shimmer to it. I don't know if you can sort of see that glimmer across the face. I want to see how this one swatches because it is intriguing enough. Uh, it's not a very exciting color. I will definitely say that, but it's pretty. Okay, it's very clumpy. <laughs> it's very clumpy. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what a second cup does, but... It did get a little bit of fuzz, so that's a my bad down there, but it also was pretty clumpy, so this one might be in need of a little bit more help, maybe some thinner or something. We'll see. Yeah, still pretty chunky. Oh well. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if this is worth trying to help. It's pretty streaky, so it's hard to say. Um, On camera, I think it's coming across more like a very light, washed out blue. And I do kind of like the color, but not enough to keep it. So we're going to put pastel gray in the not keeping pile. Then we're going to go over a few of these random little guys that we have. Two from Bon Bons. Um, are they named? I don't see a name, but they both are moving around pretty well. That actually is a surprise to me. It's one of the things I don't like about mini bottles is I don't use bottles fast enough and fully enough for them not to dry out. And small bottles tend to dry out pretty quickly in my experience, but this is actually in pretty good shape. So this first one is an orange full of glass fleck, and I think it's scented. <laughs> Just that brief um, unboxing, it smells like orange. Very interesting. So I think I actually will be holding on to this one. This is kind of fun. Uh, so just a little something to use as a topper. And then the blue one is a shimmer. This one's kind of a mermaidy shade. And we'll just see if that shimmer is still okay. Yeah, again, still seems to be in pretty decent shape, surprisingly. This one is more of a straight up shimmer than the glass fleck, almost a larger particle that was in the orange one. And I can't tell if this one is scented as well. Again, not smelling the bottle directly, just the wafts that I'm getting. Um, don't smell like nail polish so much as a something scent. Uh, let's see if it says in here. Offhand, I'm not seeing anything that says scent or anything like that, but um, cute and I do like it. So we'll go ahead and keep it. See if I can't get at least one Manny out of it or an accent nail. The next pint size bottle is from Mesh and Lace or Mesh Lace. It is a green and I'm not seeing a name, but it says it's from Walmart made in China. This one does seem to be a little bit dried out. Yeah, it might might be okay with some thinner in it, but I don't like the color enough to hold on to it. I think I'll go ahead and put that in the not keeping pile. And then we have two more. This is actually one that I was pretty excited to see. This is a beautiful OPI called Tiffany Case. And I didn't end up looking this up to see if this was one that I had or not because I liked the color enough. Plus I already saw some colors in there in that bag that I, I knew I liked anyways. And again, for $4.99, you couldn't go wrong. <laughs> But this is a really beautiful glitter polish. I'm curious if this is one that is textured. I want to say maybe it is because it is thicker and the cap is textured. It does seem to be in need of a little bit of thinner, but it doesn't seem too, too bad. So I will be adding this to the key pile. 
This will make a beautiful one for winter. Of course, I do need to double check and see if I own it or not because I want to say I had gotten a few older OPIs over the course of my finding polish at Goodwill, but I don't remember if this was one of them. So that's going in the keep pile. And then the last one from bag number one is Love and Beauty from Forever 21. And this one is called Light Blue. Very creative. <laughs> Oh, some companies just cannot be bothered to name polishes. Uh, we're going to see how this one swatches. It is light blue with some shimmer, and I do like those kind of polishes. But indie polishes do them so, so well. And I just realized I'm putting this over the light gray, but it doesn't seem to matter. <laughs> Does not seem to matter. So the shimmer on this one seems to mainly be gold. I actually kind of like this one, though. Hmm, I didn't see that coming. I did. I really wasn't sure if I was going to be holding onto this one or not. So in the bottle, I think you can see that the gold does shift to green. So maybe in two coats, you can see more of that green. But there it is again in one coat. I think maybe at certain angles, it is coming across as a green shimmer. But oddly enough, I think I'm going to hold on to that. I think it's pretty unique to my collection. It's a different shade of blue and a different type of shimmer than most of the indies that I have in this kind of polish. So we're going to be keeping that. I'm kind of surprised. <laughs> All right. So we've got our keeps and our not keeps. I'm going to push those aside and then we'll go on to bag number two. All right. So the second one is this one that was $5.99. This one I could see some Sally Hansons and there's one down here that really caught my eye. So we're just going to go straight to that one because this one I was really excited to see and I know it's one that I don't have. It is this one which is Sephora by OPI and this one is called I'm with Brad. I have been really really impressed with the Sephora by OPI polishes that I do have in my collection and I think I only have like two or three. So when I saw this one and that it was a shimmer polish, I knew I had to get this bag of nail polish so that I could bring this home and see how I like this polish. Um, in the bottle, it seems to be a blackened base full of a red shimmer. I think you can even see some shifts though to a bit of orange or gold. So I want to see how that looks on the nail and if the bottle is in good shape. Yeah, might be a little bit thick but not too bad. All right, we'll see how this one swatches. So this might need a bit of thinner, but not too bad. I really like this color though. This is awesome. So here it is in one coat. Definitely lives up to what I was seeing in the bottle. You have that blackened base with some red glow. I don't know if that red glow is popping up very well. But we'll see how it looks in two coats. I think I will add a little bit of thinner just to help things out. And if you hear any noise in the background, Willa is chasing her brother around the room at the moment. And if you are new to my channel, Willa is a cat. <laughs> so I added a few drops of thinner. Let's see if that sort of helps with application. Yeah, I think you could use a couple more drops, maybe a few. That is very, very pretty. So there it is in two coats. Sort of a vampy look. So we will be holding on to that one. So this one we're going to get off out of the way right off the bat. Wow. This one is in very bad shape. This is by Pink Fizz Beauty Essentials and it's a glow in the dark nail polish. This one is, well, I don't know if you can see that, but that's all dried to the side of the bottle. And this was also partially open when I dumped out the box. Uh, yeah, that's not, um, no, that's, that's glue at this point. <laughs> so we will be just getting rid of this. It's completely dried out. All right, next up, we have some sinful colors. This is a beautiful bright pink called Shining Heart. And this is definitely up my alley as far as the types of pinks that I really enjoy wearing. I do want to see how this one swatches. It appears to be mainly a full bottle in pretty good shape. So this sort of has a pearl sheen to it with that, the type of shimmer that it has. Pretty opaque in that one coat. I'm trying to decide if I actually like that shimmer in this or if I feel like I have something similar enough in my collection. There's sort of a pink tone on tone. I think you can sort of see it's got a deeper base with that brighter pink shift to it. We'll do a second coat and see if I like it. 
Strangely enough, I kind of am leaning to I don't like it, at least not enough to keep it. Like I said, I do have a lot of these pinks that I've really been enjoying for summer, but I don't know. There's something about this one that just isn't drawing me in. Maybe it's because I'm just very much into fall. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll give it the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> we'll put it in my to keep pile and compare it to pink so I'm actually in the mood for bright pink so what we're gonna keep that one that was a shining heart and just see how it compares at some point to other pinks uh, the next one is also from sinful colors this one is a neon cold bright to the point this one we'll see how, how it is in the bottle mm, seems to have faded at the very least which is not surprising considering it's a neon pigment. It also seems to have maybe clumped up a little bit. Yeah, definitely not as neon as its labeling would suggest. It's almost a bright baby pink at this point. I think we will go ahead and de-stash that one. I'm just not that jazzed about it all and all together. So we're going to put that in the de-stash. Okay, next up is one from Finger Paints. This one is called Drawn to This Shade. And this is like a deep watermelon pink. We are going to swatch this one. It does seem to be in pretty good shape. This is also a type of color of pink that I have been enjoying or had been enjoying for summer. This is actually pretty bright. This is actually kind of like a bright watermelon, at least in that first coat. And oddly enough, I don't know that I am drawn to this shade. <laughs> I'm just not too sure. We'll try a second coat, see if that changes anything. And it is a beautiful color. Maybe I'm just really just over summer colors right now. I'm all about the fall. But there it is in two coats. I think on camera it might be coming off a bit more of a orange coral. It definitely has that red watermelon pink color. Maybe a pinch of salmon, but definitely that brighter, juicy watermelon shade. I think we will go ahead and just de-stash that one. We don't, we don't need to hold on to it if I'm not thrilled about it. Yeah, of the two that I'm iffy about, I'm more, whoops, already getting nail polish on my, on my mani. Uh, I'm more interested in seeing if I would like this one than I am in liking the one from Finger Paints. So we're going to keep the simple colors, de-stash the one from Finger Paints. Then let's see, let's get rid of our two oddballs. We have an unlabeled from Color Club. This is a deep fuchsia. It's not quite raspberry. It's too purple to be raspberry. Uh, honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> My color definitions and descriptions are failing me. It is a really pretty color though. No idea on the name. If you think you might know what it is, feel free to comment down below. It's sort of a jelly formula. I don't know if I didn't shake it enough or if that's just the type of formula that it is. I do really like this shade though. It's deep, sort of a neon-ish vibe, but not the bright neons. Um, I think in this color family, it's hard to get a true neon because of the deepness of the color, but I actually really like this one. So I think we will go ahead and just hold on to it. Let's go ahead and see what that second coat would do to this though. Oh yeah, it definitely amps up the coverage and the uh, depth of color. Yeah, I like that one. Still iffy about how I would describe this. It's in that tonality of pinky purplish colors that I really am not sure how to describe. It's very pretty though. I like it. Okay, our other oddball is from Sally Hansen in the Diamond Strength line called Bride to Be. This one appears to be like a green leaning silver. I don't know if that's how it initially was. It is a bit on the clumpy side, so it would need some thinner... I'm just not that jazzed about the color in general, so we will be putting this in the not keeping pile. And again, let me know if you guys would be interested in all in a less than perfect mystery bag, uh, even if it's for free, just pay shipping, or if this is the kind of thing that you're like, nope, just get rid of it. I don't want it. Let me know. <laughs> I'd be curious uh, what the consensus is. Okay, then the other ones that I got are all from Sally Hansen. They're all in the same bottle types. But we seem to have three different formulas going on. We have one in the Miracle Gel, one in the Complete Salon Manicure, and one in Color Therapy. So this was one of the colors that I did really like. 
it really, really saw some love and uh, battle, looks like, in the in someone's nail polish collection. Ooh, this is not good. Okay, that is an empty bottle. I can see, I can see the mixing balls rolling around in there. It's empty, completely empty. <laughs> So that's garbage as well. That will not be going in the tea stash. So don't worry about that. This is another one that I was excited about because this is a color family that I really, really like. This one is called Grage Gardens. Now I do think this was one of the colors that I was pretty sure I have though. So I do need to double check on that. But this bottle does seem to be almost brand new. But yeah, this is definitely a color I really, really like. Sort of a chewed up grape bubble gum as I've been describing it. <laughs> So that will be one I will be keeping to check on, see if I have it or not. If I don't have it, it will be added to the collection to at least swatch because I do need to come back and compare these grazy purples at some point. And if I do already own a bottle, it will be going in the D stash. Then last in that second bag is also from Sally Hansen. This one is called Steely Serene. This is another color that I was actually surprisingly excited to see. I like this kind of color for fall. It's sort of a neutrally tan. Let's see if this one is a surprise empty bottle before I get too excited about it. Nope, it's got polish in it. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and see how this one swatches. I think this one's going to be kind of like a mink shade. Yeah, this is beautiful. It's neutral without being too light. And I mean, it's not the most exciting color, but it's still beautiful. That's nice. We'll go ahead and let this one dry down a bit before we add a second coat, but I'm, I'm liking that one a lot. That's really pretty. All right, so here it is in two coats. Yeah, I really like this. I can't quite pinpoint the tone of this one. A weird mix between cool and warm. I don't know. <laughs> warm and cool is still something that I'm not like 100% sure on with certain colors, but this is really, really pretty. I do like this one. So we will be keeping Steely Serene. All right, so that was it for bag number two. We're gonna set aside these ones that I'm keeping and go into bag number three. So this is another one that was $5.99. Now this one, I think you'll see why I was excited to see it. And, and it wasn't exactly because of the mustache <laughs> nail stickers. Those I won't be using. <laughs> They're just not quite my style. Um, but there were some brands in here that I was really excited to see. Uh, the Lime Crime was interesting, but there's ILNPs in here. There were at least three of them. There was a Sally Hansen that was really beautiful. And then look at this guy. So this one I already know needs help. Um, I could see that it was partially dried out, but this is from Sugar Pill. And look at their little labeling. I love their branding. Um, so this one is called Catmosphere. And I already know that it needs help. So we're going to go right into opening this one up and see if it is even rescuable. Holy moly. It is pretty bad, guys. So it's got dried up nail polish everywhere. And it's my understanding that these guys don't make a nail polish anymore. I think the company might be around. I just don't think they do nail polish anymore. So that's most of it. And as you can see, it is pretty gloopy. We're going to add a lot of thinner and just see what happens. So that was about 30 drops. I'm not holding my breath or anything, but we'll see how that works. If that makes this even remotely usable. All right, well... That definitely has gotten better. It's still pretty gloopy. As you can see there, it's still pretty chunky. But that leads me to believe I might at least be able to continue to put thinner in this and get it to a point where I might at least be able to get a manicure out of it or at least keep it because it's such a cute bottle. <laughs> like I need to keep it just because it's a cute bottle, but it has a kitty cat on it. So that's my excuse. Um, But this one was sugar pill. Catmosphere going in the keep pile because it's adorable. Oh, and I guess I should describe it to you. Um, this is a soft blue full of glitter. You see pink, metallic fuchsia, metallic gold, metallic silver, and metallic aqua. Different sizes in hex glitters. So now let's do some of the oddballs before we get to the other ones that I was excited about. 
Uh, what is this? This is from Bonita Cosmetics, another glow in the dark. Where was the other glow in the dark? The other glow in the dark that we had was from Pink Fizz. Okay. So this one at least seems to be in somewhat working order. It's not stuck to the side of the bottle or anything. I'm just not that interested in it as a polish. So we'll be putting that in the not keeping pile. Uh, let's see. We've got the Ciate top coat. The exterior of it definitely has seen some better days. The bottle of it seems to be in fairly good shape. I think we'll hold on to it for at least a swatching top coat. That's probably what I'll use that one for. Uh, this one is in LA Colors called Pink Sugar. This is probably a sheer polish. So let's go ahead and just test that out. We'll try it out over one of the pinks here. Actually, no, let's try it over this one. That was Steely Serene. See how this one looks over that. Ooh, very icy. And we're going to try it over the purpley pink one that I couldn't describe. And the watermelon, because we can. <laughs> All right, so that is three different variations about how that can look. It's a pretty densely packed topper. So you might be able to layer it two to three coats and get it a little bit, I wouldn't call it full opaque necessarily, but you could get almost there. I definitely wasn't leaning towards keeping this one, but it definitely adds something. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think I will go ahead and hold on to it for the time being. We'll see if I can't get some use out of it in the winter and spring. If I don't, it might end up getting the axe next round of these dashes, but that is pretty cute. Okay. Uh, next up is another LA Colors in the Color Craze line. This one is called Cocktail. This one is a mix of glitter in a clear base. Let's see how this one looks. This one, again, I'm not leaning towards keeping necessarily. We're going to try this one over the dark color here, which was from uh, Sephora by OPI. And actually, that's a rather a pretty combination. <laughs> My goodness it almost pulled out more of the red glow and I did not notice that the silver in here was actually shards like holographic shards hmm all I was seeing was mainly the purple like pinky purple glitter Ruh -roh. I think we found another I'm gonna keep at least for the time being I want to see if I can get some use out of this. I actually really like how that turned out and it is different than the other holographic flaky top coats that I have. So I want to see how that, how I like it. Cause that's, I don't know, it's a surprise, but I like it. <laughs> okay. Let's do the last, yeah, the last LA colors. This one is called Passion Play. Now I'm pretty sure I do have this one. It's gorgeous. We are going to see how it looks over this light pink that was supposed to be a neon, just so that you guys can see how it layers. You can see some of the copper in it over that pink. So really, really pretty. Let's see how it looks on its own. So like I said, I do have this one. So this one will be going in the D stash. Definitely has top abilities for using as a topper, as you saw. And I don't know that I would exactly say that you could get this fully opaque, but you could probably layer it up enough to be distracting enough on your nails to not be too upset by the fact that it's not completely opaque. I think you can see more of the color there. So this one we will be putting in the not keeping pile. Let's go ahead and get this one out of the way too, because this one looks like it has definitely seen better days. This is an OPI called Honeymoon Sweet. And I mean, ew, look at that gross. This is another one that appears that someone did not fully close it properly. And oh yeah, no, that is, that is glue now. So it spilled. It's completely glopped up. Yeah. I have no idea if thinner would do any good to this. You could always try, I guess. I mean, I have no idea if this one's even worth, worth it. I mean, it's an older polish. I don't know if this is one that people collect or look for or anything like that but we'll see if I can restore it a little bit my goodness though this really needs to be not there oh give this a good old shake with some of that thinner I wasn't even really counting I have no idea how much I put in there probably not enough yeah nowhere near enough we're gonna put a lot more than whatever it was that I put in there 
Oh, yeah, this is just like glue. Very sticky and gloopy. So color-wise, this reminded me kind of of um, bubble bath, kind of. Except it does have a shimmer to it, like a green shimmer. Well, it's getting better. It's still not very pleasant. <laughs> I mean, this is gloopy. Holy moly. That was 15 more drops. I am completely lost count of how many I've put in here. And I guess as a side note, if you are trying to rescue some polish yourself, do make sure that you are using just a thinner that has two ingredients. This one has butyl acetate and ethyl acetate. Those are the ones that are safe to use for most nail polishes. The rule, as I've seen on other videos about it, is that you want to make sure that whatever ingredients are in your thinner is already in your nail polish. So you don't want to add something to your nail polish that wasn't already there. Also on the note about thinning, don't use what was very popular a while years ago uh, was is to put nail polish remover in it as a thinner. Don't do that. <laughs> that will potentially ruin your polish because it is a solvent and it will break down glitter and other particles in your polish over time. And initially it might be good for, you know, wearing as one manicure or something like that. But overall, it's not good for your polish. Just a public service announcement. Well, there we go. That's better, right? <laughs> it doesn't look like a mostly dried up sticky mess in there. Uh, still not very pleasant, still sticky. Uh, the whole thing would require some work to get this back to polishing order, but let's go ahead and just swatch it as bleh, sticky as it is and just see what we would be dealing with. It's definitely a neutral color with a subtle green shift or a green glow. It's interesting. It might not be my favorite color, although I am curious how it would look on my skin tone because it, it looks like it could be sort of a cute bubble bath look. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of curious about that one. We'll see if we can't continue to fix it, but we've spent a long time on it already. Okay, moving on. Let's do the one julep that we have. We seem to have a theme with some heart glitters. This one is called Heartly, and it's classic with a twist. This has some pink heart glitters in it, some white matte glitters, and some holographic. This one appears to be in fairly good shape. I don't think it's gloopy. Heart glitters just aren't necessarily my favorite, so I don't necessarily see myself wearing this but that's the heart glitter so i think we will be putting this in the d stash pile i just don't see myself using that as a topper whoops now i have glitter everywhere <laughs> okay so yeah we'll be putting that in the d stash pile okay let's go for the other heart glitter this is nicole by opi love your life and this is another pink heart glitter with some holographic scattering glitter now, surprisingly enough, I like the, I kind of like this one. Again, I don't see myself wearing the heart glitter necessarily, but let's see how it looks. We're just going to put it on the same nail just to get that heart as a comparison. You can see that it's got more of a matte light pink and the julep has metallic, like a rose gold. Let's go ahead and just see how this one looks over that OPI. So I like this, the uh, scattering of the hollow glitter. I did not get any hearts in that one though. Did I get one there? Nope. So on bottles like this, you might need to, what they call fish for your glitter. So if you have that problem, just turn your bottle upside down. Don't open it upside down. <laughs> Let the larger glitter settle. And then you can purposefully fish for that glitter. And there we go. So now we have one little pink heart glitter on OPI's, what was that, Honeymoon Suite? So this is pretty cute. I like the glitter that's in this one. 
but I feel that that glitter is easy enough to come by in other things. I don't need to hang on to a heart glitter topper. So we'll add that love your life to the D stash as well. Okay, other polishes. We've got a couple from Sinful Colors. This first one is a gold called Twilight Twinkles. I don't think this is going to be a surprise to anybody. I don't think I'm keeping this one either. This is a lot of gold and gold just isn't really my favorite. We're going to show you how it looks as a topper over this one from Sephora by OPI. We're just going to, this is going to be a layered up sandwich. So those are the gold flakies over that one. So I don't know if it's easy enough to tell what that looks like because there was a lot going on. So let's just swatch it over here so you can see all the different shapes and sizes of this. It's like square glitters and bar glitters and flaky shards. I mean, look at all of that. I mean, it's very interesting. It's just not my forte. So we're going to put that in the D stash as well. One more Sinful Colors. This one is called Ice Dream. This has some blue metallic glitters and some smaller silver. I'm wondering if I like this one or not. I can't quite decide. It's very wintry. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we'll put that in the D stash as well. But it's in fairly good shape. I mean, it's almost a full bottle, nearly a full bottle, just sort of needs some cleaning up. Okay, the next one that we're going to do is the Sally Hansen in the Complete Salon Manicure called Hidden Treasure. This is a shimmer. Curious how this will compare to a lot of the other shimmers that I have in my collection already, but I don't think I have this one. So there is one coat sort of a mix between a pearl and a shimmer. You've got some green. There's also like a larger glass fleck particle in there with the shimmer. I don't know if two coats did anything, but there is a second coat. I think this color is a little hard to see on these opaque nails. I'm wondering if I would like this one or if it's too similar to something I already have. Let's try it over one of these colors that I swatched from my sorting video. I don't even remember what most of these are, but we're going to try it over a brown and see if I like it over that. So I guess I'm very much feeling the fall vibes right now. So that is pretty opaque for a topper but it is very transformative. I think this one was Essie's Very Structured, if I'm remembering correctly. Very, very transformative. Let's see how it looks over this one. Mainly what you're seeing is that green shimmer. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. I do already have a lot of shimmer polishes, so I think I will go ahead and pass that one along as well. All right, one last oddity before we get into our ILMPs and the Lime Crime. This is Nicole by OPI. This is Heavenly Angel. This is an iridescent flaky topper. Sort of reminds me of one of the toppers that one of my friends sent me. I think it might be in one of my totes. Um, but it is a clear base loaded with these mylar type flakies. I don't believe I have this one. I do, of course, have a lot of flaky toppers. They are one of my favorite types of toppers, and I think they are super, super fun. This one does require a little bit of placement, I'm noticing. A little bit of a thick formula, but look at the rainbow. Definitely like a mylar type of flaky. Very, very pretty. So I think I will at least hold on to this for the time being, compare it to the flaky toppers that I already have and see if it is unique enough to stay in my collection or if I already have something similar enough. All right, on to the two Lime Crimes. So I know the name of this company. I don't have anything from them. I think they do cosmetics as well as, I guess, nail polish. This one appears to be a bright, bright, like tennis ball green. 
seems to be in fairly good shape. Let's see how this one swatches. Yeah, fairly good. Um, probably not my favorite color for myself. It's a little bit bright. I have been trying to push myself, at least in this past summer rack, with some colors that are similar to this, but I didn't get around to wearing any of them. <laughs> Um, so I'm not too sure if that's going to be a color that I end up keeping. I think for the time being, I will go ahead and just de-stash that one. The second one does have a label. It's called Crema de Limon, and this is a creamy yellow. I've been surprising myself liking pastel yellow, so I will swatch this one and see how I like it. And apologies, this is turning into a way longer video than I thought it would be. Yeah, look at this little like a pastel banana candy. Why do I like this shade? I'm not a yellow fan. <laughs> this is actually pretty cute. Uh, not a terrible formula either. I will have to see how it ends up looking on the nails, um, but that is pretty cute. I think I will be holding on to that one. So that was Lime Crimes Crema de Limon. Then we have three ILNPs. The reason why I was excited to see these was, well, A, it's ILNP, but this one is an older bottle, so it still has the little heart on the bottom. This first one is called Princeton, and this is a really pretty shade of green. You have some holographic and some shimmer in it, and it's definitely one that I don't have in my collection, so I want to see how it swatches. It appears to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, this is pretty. This seems to be somewhere in between like a mint and a pastel green. I like this. That's beautiful. All right, so two coats adds a little bit of opacity and amps up the color a little. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's going in the collection. That is beautiful. All right, and then the other two ILNPs, these are newer. They've got this sort of a label as opposed to the ones with the heart on the bottom. And this one is called Spiced Eggnog. Now I knew I wasn't too sure about this when I saw it in the bag, but I already saw plenty of other colors that I was curious enough about to get. So we're gonna see how this one looks um, because it's yellow-ish. Yeah, it's yellow. <laughs> it is the shade of yellow though that I'm not the biggest fan of. It does have like some orange metallic flakies in there and hollow. So it is a pretty interesting mix. We'll see how it looks in two coats. So here it is in two coats. It definitely is a shade of yellow that I'm not the biggest fan of. It's almost got like a pinch of green to it, which is kind of odd, but you see all the metallic flakies in there. That's interesting, but yeah, color-wise, I just don't see myself reaching for this. So we will be putting this in the D-stash. That was Spiced Eggnog. And then the last one from ILNP is this one called Pink Mimosa. This one is in need of a really good shake. So this one is a like a mix between a rose gold and a silver. You have some holographic, some metallic shards. There's definitely a lot of hollow in this one. This is pretty. Let's go ahead and see how this one swatches. This is one that I'm fairly certain I don't have, although it's possible I may have gotten it in uh, one of my mystery bags or mystery boxes. So there it is in one coat. Ooh, you've got hollow and metallic flakies. I'm seeing shimmer as well, sparking in like pink. I think I'm keeping this one. That is really pretty. Oh yeah, this is so sparkly. Look at that. So that is two coats. You have all of that metallic flaky goodness, the holographic, and the shimmer. That's very neat. Very pretty. So that last one is going in the keep pile. That is ILNP's Pink Mimosa. All right, so there we have it. A very long <laughs> haul video from Goodful. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at some polish and seeing it swatched. Let me know down below if you've had any look finding polishes at your Goodfuls and if you've run into any good finds. It's always exciting to find them out in the wild like that, <laughs> especially when they're colors like ILNP or other brands that you collect. Very, very exciting. So as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me and looking at some fun polish. Hopefully you had a good time and I will see you in that next one.